All right, and today we are going to wrap up Unit 1. Um, and our lesson um, to wrap up Unit 1 is connecting geometry and algebra. So what we're going to do is take a lot of the concepts that we've already talked about, and now we're going to connect them to, to a lot of the algebra process that you learned last year. All right, so when we look at the standards here, all right, we have four um, particular things that we're going to look at. Standard 1.4, I can write and solve equations using my knowledge that the sum of the parts of a segment will always equal the whole. Segment 3.4, I can write and solve equations using my knowledge that the sum of the parts of an angle will always equal the whole. Standard 4.3, I can write and solve equations using my knowledge of congruent angles. Standard 4.4, I can write and solve equations using my knowledge of congruent segments. And what you're going to see is that none of the information has changed, right? So we've talked about all four of these things already. And what we want to do is take that knowledge, right, and now connect it, all right, to the algebra that you guys already know. So to get you thinking about algebra, here's what I want you to do. We have a nice equation here. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video, solve that equation, flip it back on, and let's see what you remember about solving equations from last year. All right, so um, what I did was go ahead and do the same thing you did. I paused the video and I did my work. And so when we look, remember that we have to distribute. All right, so you can see I distributed the negative 4 to both things in, this, um, print, in these parentheses. Negative 8x minus 20 plus 6, I distributed over here. So 21x minus 6, and I just brought everything else down. And then we combine like terms on each side. So I get negative 8x minus 14. And then if I combine like terms over here, I get 25x minus 7. And then I get one side of my equal sign equal to 0. So I subtracted 25x from both sides. I added 7 to both sides. And the reason we do this remembers our zero properties. We know things have to be opposites, right? So 7 minus 7 has to be 0. So that means negative 33x is equal to 7. And if I divide by negative 33, you could leave it as a fraction. That's totally fine, right? But if you divided it out on your calculator, all right, let's go to at least two decimal places. We try to be a little bit more accurate, and we get negative 0.21, all right? And so what we're going to try to do today, all right, and this is the connection is take what you already know about geometry, what we talked about in our first five lessons of the year, all right, and create equations and solve them, all right? So now let's look at... All right, some notes here. All right, so now, so you're going to be given um, your relationships in different ways. So sometimes this is given in words, like, all right, what we have right here. So if angle UPT is congruent to angle QPR, and the measure of angle UPT equals 4x plus 32 degrees, and the measure of angle QPR equals 6x plus 26 degrees, solve for the value of x and the measure of UPT. All right. Now, so here's what we want to do. We know what congruency means, right? So we know if two angles are congruent, we know they have the same measure. So what that tells me is that, oh, the measure of angle UPT has to equal to the measure of angle QPR. All right. And so that's taking the geometry that we've already talked about. Congruency means they have the same measure. So here's the relationship that we're going to write down. And now here's where the algebra part comes in, right? So, oh, I know what UPT is. UPT is 4x plus 32. So I can put that in like that. I know QPR is 6x plus 26. And notice now that creates the linear equation, all right, that we can solve, all right? Now, I'm not going to solve it right now. This is more about just trying to help you set up, all right? So we could be in words, right? Now, the other thing is we've talked about all right, some of our diagrams and pictures, right, and how things might be notated there. All right, so notice here, it's the same problem. Solve for x and the measure UPT, right, which is the same thing that we had up here, right, solve for the value of x and the measure of UPT. All right, so that's the same thing here, but now notice, now the words are in our diagram, so we have to analyze that picture to get the relationship. Then if we go back to our last lesson, right, and I'm just going to make this a little bit darker, we can see that we have the arc marks here. Those two angles are congruent. Therefore, they have the same measure. Therefore, right, we can still get to 4x plus 32 equals 6x plus 26. So notice we get to the same equation that we had from above, but the information is given to us in a different context. All right, and that's the challenge sometimes is that you have to be able to go in and out of the different context, right, and translate that information into an equation that you can therefore solve. All right, so hopefully that's making sense to you. All right, so now let's talk about a few other things that are unique to the problems that we solve here. All right, so let's look at um, page two of your notes here. 
all right? So we're not just solving equations, right? Now we're solving equations within a geometric relationship, a geometric context. So that means our answers have to make sense within the context of that problem. So we have to keep some things in mind. So if we're talking about segments, segments must always have a positive length. So if I solve for a value of x and I plug it back in, and it says that the segment AB is equal to negative 4, that doesn't make sense. Not that x is equal to negative 4, that the segment is equal to negative length. That doesn't make sense, all right? So we know that segments have to be positive. So once that, whatever x value I get, if I plug it back in, it has to give me a positive length for my segment. Same thing for our angles. Our angles must have a positive measure, right? So notice on this problem right here, right? It says find the measure of angle UPT. Well, if I plug solve for x and I plug it back in, and it says the measure of angle UPT is negative 8. That doesn't make sense. All right, so we have to have a positive angle measure. Now, the other thing we need to know is that our angle needs to be between 0 and 80. Or sorry, 0 and 180. All right, so we want that measure to be between 0 and 180. All right, so the big thing is that whatever values we get, right, we have to go back in and plug it in to make sure it works. All right. Okay, especially when we start getting into some quadratic problems and things like that, where we may have more than one value of x. Now, here are some tips to help you, right? So if you're not given a diagram, you might want to start by creating one that represents that information and then labeling that diagram. All right, create a picture, help yourself, give yourself a visual. All right, we're very visual learners, or a lot of you are, right? So give yourself that, that help. Write an equation based on the geometric relationship that exists based on the given information. So that's exactly what I did here, right? I read the words, right? And I created my equation, that relationship, so then I could plug in whatever information I needed. All right? So make a note of what we're solving for, okay? I'm solving for I need to know the value of x, and I need to know the measure of angle, whatever, right? Substitute what you know into the geometric relationship you wrote, which is what I did, right? Solve the equation using your knowledge from Algebra 1. All right, and then just remember, as we go through the year, right, you have linear equations, quadratic equations, systems of equations, all right? So as we work, we want to keep identifying what type of problem we have so we know how to solve those, all right? And then number six here, all right, once again, once you have your answer, we need to plug them back into determine if it makes sense within the geometric relationship, all right, that we started the problem with. All right, now, there's that. So now, let's look at a few problems together, all right? So if you want to flip to page three here, all right? And we're going to see some of the problems that we've already worked, but now they're going to have variables in them. So when I look at problem one here, all right? When I look at this, this is this idea that the parts of a segment have to equal to the whole. So when I look at this problem, here's what I know. I want to find the value of x, okay? So I want to know what x equals, all right? So that's the first thing. I want to know what lk equals. All right, so those are the things I'm looking for. Now, here's what I know from my picture. I know that LK plus KJ has to equal to the whole segment, which is LJ. All right, and now I can take that relationship and now I can substitute in the information, all right, that we have here. So 4X minus 1 is LK, 2X minus 2 is KJ, and then LJ, all right, is 9. And notice now I can take and go through, all right, what I know from algebra and solve this equation. So now I can combine like terms. So 4x plus 2x is 6x. One, negative 1 and minus 2 is negative 3, and that equals to 9. Now I always get my equations equal to 0. So 6x minus 12 is equal to 0, which means 6x has to equal to 12, which means x has to be 2. All right, so there's the first thing I'm looking for, x equals 2. Now, I want to go through and make sure this makes sense in the problem. So now, part of this is, all right, I need to know what LK is. All right, well, LK was 4X minus 1. So I can plug in 2 here. So I get 4 times 2 minus 1. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So LK is 7. All right, that seems to make, or excuse me, not 7. Yes, 7. 4 times 2 is 7. Okay, there we go. All right. That makes sense. Now, just to verify, notice if I come back up here and I plug 2 in here to make sure. So LK is 7. The whole thing should be 9. So KJ should be 2 if I did this problem correctly. 
So if I plug 2 in here, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2 as well. And then 7 plus 2 is 9. So that makes sense. All right? That makes sense. So that's what we're talking about. Go back in and plug it in to make sure it makes sense within the context, all right, of that problem. All right, now, okay, I'm going to um, skip down to, all right, number four here. So I'm going to go down to number four. All right, so looking at a different relationship here, okay, it tells me that GB, segment GB, is congruent to segment PA. All right, so if those segments are congruent, what I know is GB, the measure of GB, has to be equal to the measure of PA. So there's the geometric relationship I get from this piece of information. And I know GB is this, so I can substitute that in. I know PA is 3x uh, plus 3, so I can put that in. And now, once again, I'm into an algebraic situation that I should feel comfortable solving. All right, so I distribute first. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and that equals to 3x plus 3. And once again, I'm going to get my right side equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 3x, subtract 3x, subtract 3, subtract 3. So that means 3x minus 15 is equal to 0. All right, 15 minus 15 is 0, so 3x has to equal to 15, which means x is equal to 5. All right, so there's my first value of x. Now, notice I want to know what is the length of GB. Well, we know GB is 3 times 2x minus 4. So I can take my x value and plug it in. So 3, and then I just plug that in like that. All right, and now once I look at this and simplify inside my video, or inside my parentheses here, all right, I get 10 minus 4, which is 6, and then that gets me to 18. All right, so that looks like a good fit there. All right, now, once again, I have to verify this. If I plug it in for PA, 3x plus 3, all right, I should get 18 as well. All right, so 3 times 5 plus 3, and that is 18. So they are, in fact, equal. All right, let's do one more problem together. So let's do an angle problem together. So let's flip the page, all right, and look at problem five. All right. Now, once again, here's our picture. All right. And this is, once again, the sum of the parts equals the whole. But now we're talking about an angle versus, all right, a segment. But it doesn't change, right? I know this angle plus this angle equals the whole angle. All right. And we want to find the measure of RST, which is the whole angle. So if I write out what I know, that means angle TSH plus the measure of angle HSR equals to the measure of angle HS, whoops, sorry, TSR, which is the whole. And once again, now I can take this information and plug it in. All right, so TSH, TSH is HST, that's the same thing, so that's 4X plus 1. HSR is the same as RSH, which is 140. And then TSR, it told us, which is RST up here, is 21x plus 5. And so once again, start by writing out that geometric relationship, substitute what you know, and then go about and solve. So if I combine like terms on the left here, I get to this. All right, and I'm going to put my reminder here. I'm looking for the measure of angle RST. That's what I need to find. All right, that's my question. So I'm just going to write that right here so I don't forget. Okay. I'm going to make my right side equal to 0. There we go. So that would be negative 17x plus 136 is equal to 0. All right, so negative 136 plus 136 is 0. And then I can divide by negative 17. And once again, just don't be afraid to use your calculator if you need it. So I think that's 8. It is 8. So I get x equals 8. All right. Notice, but that's not where I end the problem, right? Because now I'm not solving for X, right? It says find, right? And maybe I should have gotten out my highlighters, probably what I should have done. Find the measure of angle RST. So now I have to take this value and plug it in. So 21 times 8 plus 5. And so 21 times 8 plus 5 tells me that the measure of angle RST is equal to 173 degrees. And I'm going to put that degree symbol on there just like that. And that makes sense, 
right? It's between zero and eight, 180, it's positive. And then if I wanted to, all right, um, verify, right, I can plug in here and I should get 33, right? So four times eight is 32, 32 plus one is 33, 33 plus 140 is 173. All right, so there's your introduction to connecting our geometric concepts to some of the algebra processes that we learned in Algebra 1, and we'll continue to see you then.